yes, clarifications. Um, I think it's important to distinguish copyright from plagiarism. So plagiarism is when you, um, because actually in, in most academic places you can actually quote people without breaching copyright. But if you don't give attribution, you're actually plagiarizing. And so plagiarizing is much more of a moral uh, thing and not very legal. And so you have rules inside of universities, but there are very few international laws about plagiarism. Um, and so there are many cases where the, you don't have one or the other. So you can actually breach copyright. Um, for instance, even if you give attribution, if I take the whole song by some copyrighted material, it's still copyright breach. But if I quote um, Ziad's paragraph in my PowerPoint and I don't give him attribution, it's probably legal under copyright law, at least in the United States, but it's plagiarism. And so those are two related but separate things. Um, and so I think that inside the university you have both problems. Um, and in fact, I think that uh, it's important to educate the, the difference between the two, because I think that you want to also in addition to this Creative Commons, I think you want to kind of try to change as much as possible the ability under copyright law to use, um, to share materials. And, and one of the things I, I say that with um, text, it's pretty advanced. I think that the universities have policies and the copyright is usually pretty fair about text. The area that is the most difficult that we are finding now is audiovisual. And so for, if you want to use a video from a television or if you want to use a, a, a photograph, um, it's often much harder because, for instance, I, I don't, you, and you can maybe ha educate me, but mm. at least in, in Japan and in the US, if you take a book, if I write, publish a book, you can quote the book under copyright law. And for plagiarism, if you say where you got the text, it's standard educational sort of academic practice to be allowed to quote the book in your paper. But it's very difficult to quote a video, or quote a song, or quote an image, because copyright law doesn't really use this um, multimedia as part of the kind of, um, what do we call it, this um, public discourse. Public. And one of the big difference I, differences, I think, is that the younger generation now, with YouTube and everything, are starting to use video and audio and pictures more and more for speech and academics and text is, I think text is becoming kind of like Latin, you know, or classic or Arabic, you know, the, the really high level of education will use it, but really to engage the real young people, you have to start making it, you know, PowerPoint and pictures and things like that. And copyright law is very behind in this space in the United States and in, 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 in Japan. And that's, I think, needs to be addressed. Okay. Uh, my question for Mr. Itu, uh, what about publisher? Are they support this idea or uh, fight this idea? I mean, do you have any agreement with the publisher? For example, uh, for textbooks, for students, or something like that? Thank you. Yes, there's a, um, um, as you can imagine, there are many publishers who don't like the idea. But uh, there are many publishers who also um, support the idea. Um, there's a nonprofit organization called the Public Library of Science, which is um, working on trying to create uh, open um, academic journals. There are many um, commercial publishers like Penguin Books in the United States or uh, O'Reilly. I just published a, a book also, which is going to be, you can download the book and um, for free, but you can also buy the book. Um, there's a very simple kind of um, uh, formula that you can do. I mean, I think that, the, and, and there's actually a good case study about this, but if the book is already has a high demand, um, then it probably doesn't make sense to give it away for free. But if the book has a low demand, there's a, you can actually show kind of a curve. The down, freely downloaded versions that then become shared actually increase the demand. And what you find is for most books, especially if it's a thick book, it's cheaper to buy the book than to print the book. And the demand for printed book is some percentage of the overall. So there is some cannibalization where the freely downloaded book takes away from sales, but then you have to calculate that by what, how does it increase the demand for the book. And there are many publishers experimenting with what sort of book is good to license Creative Commons and what sort of book 
makes more money not. This is the commercial publishers. The academic publishers have a different uh, struggle because um, the what we're finding now is that um, the academic publishers are now becoming a barrier for um, transmitting um, academic works to developing nations and other places because of the cost is so high. Um, and this is actually a much bigger issue involving governments and things like that. Um, and we're trying to help save the, the model. But it's, it's starting to hold things back. So there's academic publishers and commercial publishers. Um, my book that I just published is a photography book, which I think is actually easier um, because the printing is so difficult. So, so, um, but, but, so the, 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 good, the answer is many publishers are afraid, but the, we have maybe, I think, five, ten publishers who are very aggressively um, testing this uh, Creative Commons model. السلام عليكم آية لاموش جامعة آل البيت بدي أسأل إذا شخص من المستخدمين عن جهالة أو عن عمل نسخ نسخة غير مسموح بنسخها أو عدل عليها شو العقوبة اللي نو ممكن تلقاها أو بيقدر ينسخ أو ما بيقدر يعني مش عارف إحنا بنحكي على اللي هي رخصة المشاعر الإبداعي القضايا اللي صارت هي طبعا بالوطن العربي ما حصل ولا أي قضية احنا تقريبا عم نحاول نعمل اللي هي الترخيص كنوع من أنواع الاتفاق على أساسه في حال وجود أي قضية أمام أي محكمة فهو بكون المرجع لنا فيها اللي هو الاتفاق أو الرخصة اللي هي متوفر على الانترنت فاستطيع حمايتها كاتفاق خرق عقد للترخيص في حال وجود اللي هي خلينا نحكي صاحب عمل في الأردن قرر إنه يرخص عمله على الكرياتيف كومنس أو المشاعر الإبداعي بمجرد وضع اللي هو اللوجو أو الأيكونز للكرياتيف كومنس على عمله فهو تلقائيا يصبح ملزم في الاتفاق اللي هي متوفرة على الانترنت بالنسخة العربية على حسب القوانين حق المؤلف الأردني رشة القير جامعة علي البيت طبعا جهودكم مشكورة طبعا أنا كان عندي سؤال بالنسبة لخططكم المستقبلية لهذا الموضوع لكن كنت بدي أحكي جملة إنه مشروع إنه المشاعر الإبداعي بالنسبة لهذا الموضوع يعني هو موضوع جديد على وطننا العربي لكن مش غلط إنه إحنا نعرف شو عم بيصير بالعالم وبالنسبة إحنا أنا يعني كطالبة طالبة جامعية لو ما جيت اليوم على هالكتشر كان أنا ما عرفت أبدا شو قاعد يعني عن هذا الموضوع نهائيا بتمنى طبعا انه يكون هذا الموضوع يعني انه ينتشر خاصة بين طلاب الجامعات وما احوج الوطن العربي فعلا لمجموعة مثل مجموعة طلال ابو غزالة حتى انه نبدأ بطرح هاي المواضيع مثل مشاعر الدعي وغيرها من المواضيع الذي يعني اللي ما بجرؤ حدا ابدا حتى على طرحها وانها يعني مش حتى انه تطرح للمناقشة ما بدنا نحكي انه نطبق في مواضيع كتير لا يجرؤ احد على طرحها للمناقشة مش بس حتى انه تطبق شكرا لكم كتير ويعطيكم الف عافية بس بالنسبة لاستفساري انه شو محضرين انتم مستقبلا للمشاعر الابداعي شكرا